Okay, so now that we've moved the header row out, one thing one thing that we can do is resize these columns. Okay, um, what we need in order to resize these columns, we need to have a handle to drag. Now we could import jQuery UI and do a whole dragging thing, but the kind of dragging we're going to do is really simple, and we can do it with the simple mouse move. What we need to do is add a handle on the right side of everyone. So one here, one here, one here, and that's how we need to do it. So in order to add a handle to the right, okay, um, you need to well, you gotta you gotta put the div in here and position it absolutely with a right position of zero. But you can't just put a div inside of a, a table cell and position it absolute. In order for a element to be positioned absolute, it can be absolutely relative to its parent. However, its parent has to be a block level element. Table cells are not block level elements, so it will not work. So you have to actually put a div inside of here first that fills the entire cell, make that div, which is a block level element, relative, and then put another div inside of that div, which is absolute right zero. And that gives us the case. Let me show you how we're doing that. So what we need to do is after we do, uh, inside of our move header row, we're going to do that in here. Okay. And we're only going to do this once um, because we're going to write because we're going to add these listeners. The only, we're only going to add these listeners once. That's what we're doing here. So we're going to say, okay, grab that first tr that we created, dot find all the ths, dot each function, and function takes i item. Uh, we're going to need those later. So what the, these i items do is, it's, pre, it's pretty simple. i is an index, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Item is the each, each td uh, as we go through. Okay? We can also use this. So what we're going to do is we're going to cache the th equals this. Like we cached everything else, caching makes it go faster. Then, we, in order to replace the entire inside with a div, we need to replace the entire inside. So we're just going to clear out the HTML completely. Just going to clear it out and start fresh. But before we do that, we want to save the text. So var text equals th.text. First save the text, then we will say th. Um, th.html blank. So we've now blanked out the item. Okay, so if we look at that, uh, that will fail horribly because I've uh, ruined something. So error console, parse error, line 187, 187, first tr.findth.h function. That doesn't need to close yet. Okay, so there's that. So again, we've just cleared all these out. They don't exist anymore. But we still have a reference to the text. So, next step. We need to create um, a handle and the resizer itself. So we're going to create two elements. Var call handle, which is going to be a new jQuery element. Basically, that's going to consist of a div, which we will give it a custom class, equals call handle. And that's going to be a div, just like that. Okay. And then we're going to have another div, call resizer, which is going to be the um, the the entire the entire thing. The handle is just a small piece. This is going to be the big piece. And that's another jQuery element as well. And that's going to be another div. Uh, div class equals call resizer div. And then what we can do with this guy is since we have a jQuery element, we can add the HTML. We can add that text that we wanted. And we can actually go ahead and append our handle inside of this guy call handle okay and that's the idea behind that now let's uh, go into the CSS and look at what these are for a minute so the resizer is let's make this background be red and this background be blue just so you can see it we've made the handle small 20 by 10 and it's positioned right negative 10 you'll see why in a second you know what I'll make it zero and top zero but it's key that this is absolute and this is relative that's the key save that so it's there and now we need to actually do something with this before we move on let's go ahead and say th.append call resizer okay and that will add it to the element okay so here is the divs that we've created okay and here's the handles that we've created the handles are all off by the size of the handle which is 15 pixels so what we're gonna do is move them to the right 15 pixels let's do that for a second um, which is exactly what I had. I'm sorry, 10 pixels right there. Refresh. So now they're all directly in the center of each line. 
Okay, and there we go. So now we've got a handle, which means we've got a, dig, a div that we can click that's in the center. And the only reason this is possible is because it's inside of this red div. Okay, so let's get rid of these colors because they're terrible to look at. Transparent and transparent. Save and refresh. So now we've got these hidden elements there, which is great. And now what we want to do is actually do a click on these. So we're going to just do a call handle dot mouse down function passing in E of course E for our event now what we want to do is store the start X value what we're gonna do is say okay when you click store the X value and I'm gonna start moving and then I'm gonna be watching for the move and say okay just adjust the width of the TH as I'm moving and then use my equalize function to equalize all the columns to the new width so we're gonna say var start x equals e dot client x which is the mouse position then we're going to add a new um, listener we can't add, we're going to add the mouse move listener we're not going to add the move listener to the call handle because there's a good chance that as I'm dragging my mouse will go outside of the element okay and I don't want that to, if that happens then the mouse move no longer is affected so my mouse needs to be on the whole document so we're going to do document dot mouse move function and they actually can't do this because this is a, I'm making this function this whole thing to be generic and I need to be removing this mouse move listener later and if I do it this way when I remove the mouse move listener it'll remove all of the mouse move listeners and when you write something for the public you can't do that uh, because you don't know what else is going to be there so you're going to do dot bind mouse move dot grid which is basically giving the event a namespace so I can remove it specifically later like that Okay, and I'll write that in a second, but what that allows me to do is down here I can say document dot bind, I'm sorry, dot uh, document dot mouse up, so just a general mouse up listener um, uh, function. Because when you mouse up, I want the dragging to stop. I'm going to uh, document dot unbind okay mouse move dot grid which says okay if I didn't have the dot grid it would remove all mouse moves and I don't want to do that I only want to remove the mouse move with the namespace grid okay that's the key there so let's go ahead and write the functions for this we already have a reference to that th up here which is our our uh, header the current header we're on so th dot css and actually we can just do dot width I don't know why I did that here um, the width and the width of this is basically going to be the current width which is th dot width um, plus and now we needed the difference between where I am now and where I was before which in this case is going to be e dot client x minus the start x and we have e dot client x here which referred to the client x when you mouse down and e dot client x here refers to the current as I'm moving around and I just need to make sure I close my parentheses properly make sure I did I did okay so that's gonna set the width and then we need to reset the start if we don't reset the start width then um, it's always going to be in reference to the very first time you clicked and we need it to be in reference to the last time basically we're getting a distance here so start x equals e dot client x okay as I'm moving it resets I'm not gonna call the equalize function yet so you can see what happens so let me save this and refresh it and now as I drag you can see that it's kind of um, it's well it's not it's obviously not equalizing the columns for one and it's kind of moving it off out of the way which is kind of weird it's equalizing when I so it looks like it's it's allowing me to click these guys so it's the reason it's refreshing is because it's actually calling the click on these headers so we need to stop that click as well but uh, so anyway let's go ahead and fix the equalize so what we'll do is we'll just call uh, grid dot equalize I think it was equalize columns right and now as I drag it will keep the columns equalized pretty cool and it's also that problem with it opening up over here is also going to go away equalize takes care of making sure it restricts to its width so if I need the date to be bigger date bigger and and now the user has freedom to do whatever they want to do and now um, that equalize columns also fix the clicking problem um, 
kind of, sort of. You need to work on it a little bit. Um, I just did this, so we'll see how it goes. But right now, it's, it's doing really well for resizing these columns, for doing a cool secret way of resizing the columns, um, and it's still sticking at the top, so that's, that's pretty much good. Um, the way I'm doing the clicking, just so you're aware, <clears throat> is that I'm catching the, the click, and I'm saying, okay, if I'm clicking on the call handle, don't refresh the column list. Okay, th this, this function is catching the click on the columns, the one that's actually doing the sorting. I'm saying if I'm clicking and I happen, because clicking on that, that element is still technically clicking on these header rows. So what I'm doing is saying if my original target is this call handle, don't refresh, don't do a sort. So that's the other kicker here. If I didn't have this, it would always refresh the grid every time I click, which obviously isn't the goal. So that's that. That's how we do uh, resizable columns in the grid.